Raise your hand if you need a roadmap to get started in Clo 3D. It looks really cool, but really overwhelming. You're not alone, my friend. I've been there myself and so have countless others. And it's a big part of the reason we're launching our Clo course. If you can get through the basics, the rest will come. But there's such a mishmash of information on where to even start. So today I'm going to talk to you about some of the most commonly used tools in Clo. And if no one else has, I'm giving you permission to ignore the other ones until you actually need them. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, everyone. If you're new here, my name is Mikkel Drew Pelham. I make videos weekly talking about digital fashion design software and communications. So if those topics are of interest to you, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So I want you to know that it's okay to not know every tool in Clo. You won't need every tool to create your designs. And once you master the basics through lots of practice, you'll have a better understanding of how the program works and you'll also have an easier time searching for answers for more advanced tools and functions. So if you're new, don't worry about doing a runway show. Just focus on getting the simple t-shirt dress on your avatar in the color you want. Now, when you first open Clo, you might look at those two windows and all those tools and be like, what the what? <laughs> but one step at a time, friend. Let's talk about the 2D window and the tools that go with it. And PS, for those of you that use Illustrator, you're going to find that a lot of these tools work very similarly. The first set of tools I'm going to start with are the shape tools. That's the polygon, rectangle, ellipse, and spiral. And most patterns mimic a basic shape with some tweaks. So if you're creating patterns from scratch, these are the tools you're going to use. And like Illustrator, if there's a keyboard shortcut, it shows to the right of the tool name. Next is the internal shape tools, which are the same as the regular shape tools, but for shapes that are inside a main pattern shape. So like a pocket on a top or a sweatshirt. Next is the transform pattern tool. This is like the black arrow in Illustrator. When you need to select your entire pattern piece, this is the tool. And right underneath that is the edit pattern tool, which is like the white arrow in Illustrator. And you'll use this to edit your pattern pieces. And if you press and hold the left mouse button, you'll see the rest of the pattern editing tools that will allow you to curve lines, split lines, add points, etc. In 3D, the pattern pieces don't just magically come together. You have to virtually sew them together so you can dress your avatar, much like you sew together an actual garment. So the next set of tools you're going to use are the virtual sewing tools. And there are three main tools. An edit sewing tool that will allow you to edit any sewing you've created. I usually use it if I need to delete some sewing lines I created. Segment sewing and free sewing. Next are the top stitch tools. Again, you have an edit top stitch, the segment free and seam line top stitching tools. The last set of 2D tools you'll probably need is the seam allowance tool. If you plan to output your patterns to sew a first proto, you'll need to add seam allowance to the pattern. In the 3D window, the first tool that looks like an arrow pointing downward will be used by everyone. It's the simulation tool, and this is the tool that's going to dress your avatar. Underneath that is the selection tool, and when simulation is on, it looks like a little hand that helps to style the simulation. There's also the same sewing tools in the 3D window, so you can sew either in the 2D or the 3D windows. The next tool is the Reset 3D Arrangement. And there's actually three Reset Arrangement tools, but I find that the Reset 3D Arrangement is the one I often go back to. So sometimes you've arranged, you've sewn, and then you simulate and the garment or parts of the garment just fall to the ground or they twist and do something really wonky things. Well, besides undo, with Reset 3D Arrangement, if your pattern pieces have fallen to the ground in a bunch, this will virtually pick them back up, 
lay them out straight and reset all your pattern pieces on the avatar so you can try to figure out what you did wrong and why your avatar isn't being dressed properly. The 3D pen tools are one of the things I find to be amazing and a real standout for Clo. These are the tools that will literally allow you to draw your design directly on a nude or dressed avatar. And then it will auto generate the patterns for you. The last common tool you'll use is high res garment. And this tool allows you to set your properties when you're ready to do a final rendering and really make the garment look realistic. Now, of course, there may be more tools you'll use depending on what you design. In the 2D window, there's a dart tool, fullness tools to create pleats. So if you do wovens, you may use those often. But if you're someone who just deals with cut and sew knits or like me who designs activewear, you'll probably never touch those tools. Or if you do, it might be for a special project. Same in the 3D window. The button, zipper, and binding tools are all in there. As an activewear designer, it's rare I put a button on anything. And if you design men's shirts, you may never have to put a zipper on anything. So focus on the tools you need first. And then if you have a special project or just want to play, then worry about those other ones. But master the tools you need first. Thanks for watching today's video. Check out the link in the description to get more info about my beginner beta clo course that is available for pre-sale next week and launching on Monday, August 22nd. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video if you find it helpful. Have a fantastic week and I'll see you next time.